Chapter six, Chicken of the Ocean. It's Junie B, she's writing in her journal again. It says, day three, dear first grade journal, my camera pinch pictures aren't going that good. On account of first I got grouchy ladies and then I looked like a doofus. So far, my photo journal is telling the stupidest dumb story I ever heard of. Today will be better, I hope, because me and mother and daddy are going to snorkel. And snorkel is the grown-up word for when you swim with a giant hose in your mouth. I like that word of snorkel. Also, I like snortle and snarkle and snooty. Your friend, Junie B. Snorkel. I put down my pencil and I waited for mother and daddy to get up. Those two have lazy bones. Only, I'm, only I am not allowed to jiggle them awake anymore or else mother turns out cranky. I kept waiting real patient for their eyes to open. Then finally I tiptoed next, tippy toed next to daddy and I blew air in his face. He opened one eyeball. I waved very pleasant. Hello, how are you today? I said, look, I'm already dressed for breakfast. Daddy closed his eyeball. I opened it up again. Whoops, you lost, I lost you there for a second, I said. Don't you wanna see what I'm wearing today? I stepped back so he could see my clothes. Then I twirled all around like a fashion girl. See me, Daddy, see how cute I look? I picked out an outfit to go with Squeezer's flat so parrot head. He looks very cute with these shorts, don't you think? He looks like a parrot belt, kind of. I skipped around in a circle. I'm glad that mother didn't cut him off, I said. He wasn't even uncomfortable to sleep in, hardly. After that, me and Squeezer climbed on the bed and we sat on mother's legs until she woke up. It didn't actually, it did not actually take that long. Then, yippee hooray, all of us went down to breakfast and mother said I could order pineapple and coconut pancakes. And that is just like eating dessert, I tell you. The waitress looked at me and Squeezer. She did a little chuckle. Wow, you already have your swim ring on, huh? She said, all you have to do is blow them up and you're all set to go. I did a frown at that comment. Yeah, only I can't actually blow him up or else he squeezes the life out of me, I said. The waitress stopped smiling. Oh, she said, oh my. Then she took our order and she backed away from the table real slow. After breakfast, daddy had to go on his job interview. And so me and mother went to the pool while we waited for him. Then as soon as he got back, hooray, it was time to go snorkeling. After everyone was ready, we got in the car and we drove to a special snorkel beach. That word made, made me laugh in the car. I said it a million times, I think. Snorkel, I said, snorkel, snorkel, snorkel. I'm going to snorkel. Here is a snorkel poem. I took a breath. Snorkel, snortle, snoodle, noodle, snorkel, snartle, snark, snorkel. <laughs> Mother turned around. Please stop it, she said. She took an aspirin. Mothers do not appreciate poetry, apparently. Pretty soon, Daddy... Daddy pulled into a beach parking lot and he carried our snorkel stuff to the water. Mother helped me on with my swim fins. Swim fins look exactly like frog feet, except for they are not on an actual frog. It's hard to walk in frog feet. You have to lift your feet way high in the air like you are marching in a band, except for frogs don't march in a band usually, on account of most of them don't play an instrument. After I put on my frog feet, I put on my face mask and snorkel snout. A snorkel snout is a giant hose that you breathe with. Then daddy took me into the water and we tightened my face mask and ta-da, I was ready to go. I floated on top of the water and I breathed through my snorkel snout. I did very good with my breathing because I already practiced this activity in the pool, that's why. Only wowie wow wow, I could not believe the view. I raised up real excited. The ocean bottom is way prettier than the pool bottom, I hollered. 
You can see clear as a belt down there. Mother and Daddy smiled. Then Daddy said to please use my soft voice. Snorkeling is a quiet sport, Junie B, he said. We don't want to bother the other snorkelers, okay? So the word of the day is quiet. Got it? Got it, they said. The word is quiet. After that, I put on a snorkel vest to help me float, and I held onto a kickboard, and I swam with Mother and Daddy to a special snorkel spot. Frog feet help you to swim speedy fast. Even if you're swimming in a flat so parrot, you can still be speedy. After we got there, I put my head in the water again and my eyes popped out of my head. The fish were beautiful, I tell you. There were yellow ones and blue ones and orange ones and silver ones and black ones and white ones and spotted ones and striped ones. My heart pounded at the sight of them. I raised my head and pulled out my snorkel snout. Hey, this is just like swimming in the fish tank at my school, I said. Daddy quick put his fingers to his lip, finger to his lips, and he pointed to the other snorkelers. Shh, the word of the day is quiet, remember, he said. I tried to calm my voice, only it kept on staying loud. Yeah, only I didn't know I would be this excited, I said. It's hard to control my thrill. After that, I looked at the beautiful fishes some more. I smiled and smiled inside my head. It was just like being in a fish zoo. Only just then, a little bit of trouble happened. And it's called, I spotted a stick behind a rock. And then, gulp, the stick started to move. And gasp, oh no. Oh no, the stick swam away. Cause it wasn't even a stick, that's why. It was an eel, an eel. I spotted an eel. I screamed, 911, 911. Eel spotting, eel spotting, help, help, help. Some of the other snorkelers popped up their heads. Then daddy popped up his head too. Shh, Junie B, shh. There's nothing to worry about, I promise, he said. That eel is perfectly harmless. I quick ducked down again, because I had to keep track of the eel, of course. Then, whoa, wait, hold the phone. Something even worse was floating my way, and it's called jellyfish. Jellyfish is coming. And, the, and that thing is as big as a barn, I tell you. After that, I quick turned around, and I kicked for the beach as hard as I could, and I didn't stop till I got there. Then I ran out of the water and I tripped on my frog feet and I fell over in the sand. Oh, I rested there to take a breather. Breathe, I said to my poundy heart. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Just then I heard slashing feet. I opened one eye. It was Daddy. His face did not look pleasant. I waved my fingers very nervous. Hello, how are you today? I said, I am fine, only... I turned out to be afraid of jellyfish, apparently. So I swam to the beach. And then I tripped on my frog feet, and now I am resting comfortably in the sand. I thought for a second. Also, I did not care for the eel. Just then, Mother came hurrying out of the water. She looked as grouchy as Daddy. I waved again. Good to see you both, I said. Daddy did a mad frown. This isn't a joking matter, young lady. You were supposed to stay with mother and me, he said. Don't you ever pull a stunt like that again. Do you understand? All of a sudden, my eyes got tears in them. But but I didn't even need mean to pull a stunt, Daddy. I just got scared, and I started to kick, and I didn't even know I would do that. My nose started to sniff very much. Sorry, Daddy. Sorry, Mother. Sorry I got scared. Mother and Daddy looked at each other. They didn't seem as mad anymore. Mother sat down next to me. We're not mad at you for being scared, honey, she said. We're upset because you swam away from us. You should never, ever swim alone in the ocean. I saw, saw, sighed very glum. I turned out to be a chicken, I said. I'm a chicken of the ocean. Mother smiled and ruffled my hair. I think you mean chicken of the sea, she teased. Then Daddy and she and Daddy did a chuckle. 
only I don't actually know why. After that, we walked back to the car. My camera was in the back seat. Fooey, I still haven't ta I still have to take a dumb snorkel picture for my assignment, I said. I thought today's picture would be cute, but these photos just keep, keep getting stupider and stupider. I handed mother the camera, then both of us walked back to the sand to take another dumb picture. She blew a little bit of air into Squeezer to make him look more lively. Then I posed as good as I could and click, click. Day three, Hawaii's, Hawaii is making a fool out of me.